Hello everyone, Leslie Schreiner here. This is Charlie Brown. I had some inquiries about um, how to hold your dog, how to restrain your puppy to do things like glue ears, post ears, maybe give medicine, maybe, uh, you know, they step on something, they cut a paw, and you need to be able to examine an area and a lot of times they are not cooperative about it. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so one of the techniques I want to show you is you put the puppy or the dog on your lap and you hold your hands on the front of their shoulders so you can restrain them this way. I actually thought I picked this puppy because I thought he'd struggle with me more, but um, there's a little hollow right here on the inside of the shoulder. This is the sternum here. There's a little hollow between the shoulder and the sternum. And if you put your fingers in there and you squeeze a little, you can really um, restrain them pretty well without being too forceful or without risking hurting them. But they recognize, especially a puppy, that this, these are pressure points and um, they're pretty respectful of that. If he was more fussy with me, girl, yeah. Really? Okay. If he was more fussy with me, then I would maybe say I'm holding the puppy so somebody else can work on the ears. Then I'm going to reach across and hold one elbow with one hand and then underneath and hold, hold the other hand. Now, see, he got upset because now he recognizes that I, I'm restraining him. It's okay for him to get upset about that. Um, it's necessary sometimes for people to restrain them. Oh, are you, are you feeling hurt now? To restrain them so that we can, you know, take care of their needs. So it's okay. Now, if they struggle with you a lot, I don't scold or correct or anything like that unless they put their mouth on me, in which case I'll usually bark a no, something like that. Or if they struggle so much that they're about to um, break my grip, then I will scold for that because I don't want them to ever learn that, that they are actually stronger than I am or they can be and that if they just flail like a crazy demon that I won't be able to hold them. I don't want them to learn that. So I'll scold if we're going there. Okay, so if this puppy needed ears ears uh, re-glued or re-taped or whatever, having somebody hold the puppy like this or another way is hugging him to you so his head is free but his body is con contained then somebody else can work with his head because you've got his body contained oh i know it's it's so hard life's so hard now i also want to show um another exercise that i do um because even though i picked him because i thought he'd be difficult he's not really being difficult part of that is because i carry these puppies all the time they're about 15 pounds now, so they're getting a little heavy. But by carrying them from place to place, at least one or two times a day, um, it really gets them used to the idea that sometimes they're under the control of humans and that that's safe. So um, one time I, I can do that is like if I'm going to the park or I'm taking them somewhere in the car, I carry them out to the car to put them in the crate. I carry them back from the car to put them in the yard. Um, with a smaller puppy, you can, you can carry them just with your hand under their chest like this and, and your arm wrapped around. Here's his, here's his hind quarters. So my arm comes in and then I'm underneath the ribs supporting most of the weight and my hand here. When they get a little bigger, that's not sustainable if they struggle with you. So again, I use a little bit of dog judo here. And same thing with my arm coming around, support the weight of the ribs on my forearm. But then I reach out and I hold the elbow underneath. That way, if he starts to flail, he can't flail himself out of my arms. Or, or um, if he tries to throw his head back, I can hold him and he's less likely to headbutt me or accidentally catch me with a claw or something like that when he's flailing. So 
Then I can also support his weight with my other hand. And I don't know if I'll stay on screen if I stand up. Yeah, so now I'm holding him. His weight is supported, but he can't get away. And since he's being good, while he's being good, yeah, he's a good puppy. Then, you know, then that's when we pay attention to him. That's when we say they're good. This needs to be a normal part of the puppy's life for them to recognize that it's a safe situation, that being restrained is a safe situation. And they need to learn from you that it's safe to be restrained so that they can transfer that information to the professionals that will work with them so that they can trust that their groomer, that they're safe when their groomer restrains them, that they're safe when their veterinarian restrains them, or the, the, somebody at the kennel has to, excuse me, restrain them. So this is not an exercise that, that's good for the puppy to neglect. And when they're doing really well, then maybe we up the challenge a little. A lot of puppies, a lot of dogs, they don't really like to be on their back. You're making such a liar out of me. He says, don't say I'm the least cooperative one. So you can do some things like maybe squeeze the toes a little bit, something to generate a reaction, not so you can correct him, but just so you can show him that, yeah, I know you don't want it. No. He tried experimenting a little bit. What if I put my mouth on you? Um, you know, it's okay for them to not want everything that we need to do, but them not wanting it is not a persuasive enough reason for us to not persist. Even them being afraid of it is not on its surface enough reason not to persist. It just means we need to persist in a way that's sensitive to the fear to help relieve it. But if we give them the idea that that struggling means that they don't have to do what they don't want, if we're afraid to lean into that, then we're gonna have dogs that are hard to handle. If you wanna have a dog that's easy to handle, this is a good puppy, it's a good dog, you have to, you have to put time into it, you have to put work into it. I'm, I'm, I'm stretching right now because I really thought he would be struggling and he's not. So, um, good puppy. And I just wait, when he starts to struggle, I just hold him. I don't chastise him for struggling. Like I said, unless he puts his mouth on me or the flailing gets so severe I might lose my, my grip. I just wait for him to stop on his own so I can reinforce good puppy. All right, so maybe we're looking in his ears. Maybe I blow in his ears a little. Maybe I stick my fingers in his ears a little just to get used to that idea that sometimes people do that. We might need to clean ears. The groomer will definitely need to have clippers up around the face. And for a little puppy, they need to know that having their ears messed with is a normal part of stuff. All right. Well, I appreciate you all. Please keep the questions coming. Maybe I'll try to find a less cooperative puppy and try this again. But at least this gives me an opportunity to say, what a good puppy. You did such a good job for being handled. I know. Yeah, life's hard when you're a puppy and you have to do things you don't choose. But it's important. And it's important for the relationship that you build this trust. And you can't build it if you don't lean into it. So remember, just because they don't want it, just because they don't like it, just because they have some anxiety about it, it, thank you, buddy. That doesn't mean that it's not in their best interest for you to pursue it humanely. They need you to do this. Don't shy away from it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching and um, drop questions in the, in the comments and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.